All right, gel electrophoresis. That's what we got going on today. Uh, this is just going to be a sort of for demonstration purposes kind of thing. But, uh, it, you know, I should give you a pretty good idea of how to do gel electrophoresis. So this is a pretty standard technique for separating DNA for visualization purposes and for, you know, physical separation for further uh, steps. But we're gonna start making the gel itself. This should be your first step because it kind of takes a while to set, maybe half an hour or an hour. So this is half concentration TBE buffer. So we're gonna roughly get 35 milliliters of that. And we'll put it on, look, it says four gels. So this is a little bit, there's a, there's a little bit of danger here, uh, cancer danger. This is an ethidium bromide gel. There are there are alternatives to all ethidium bromide now, but ethidium bromide is a carcinogen, so you should wear gloves and you know lab coat and everything. Uh, one of my lab mates actually spilled an entire bottle of ethidium bromide on the floor. It looked like somebody had been murdered. Um, so try not to do that, or if you do that, at least have PPE on. Fortunately, she did. So. Here's our whey paper. We're gonna zero tear our scale. This is agarose, not agar, agarose, and it says genetics, genetic anal analysis grade. Wow, English is hard. So we have this little scooper on the side which makes it convenient. We're making a uh, roughly 1% agarose gel. So if we have 35 milliliters or 35 grams of our TBE buffer, we need to add 350 milligrams of our agros. Think about that math for a second. When we use percentages in lab, you know, there there's weight percentages and volume percentages and weight volume percentages, but I think usually we're using weight percentages and it's the percentage of the total final mass. If you're dealing with low percentage things, you don't need to worry about the solvent amount, right? We don't need to use 34.65 grams of our buffer. Uh, it's just overkill. So we'll microwave this for 42 seconds. We'll start that. And then while the microwave is going, our most advanced tool in the lab, we'll make our, our little mold. So I'm sure every lab does this differently, but we'll set up this mold. So you need to move this block back and tighten this so that your block is really firm in there. We'll use the little combs. So we got little combs. We got really big combs. We got really long combs. We got all sorts of combs, but we're just running small samples. These little combs can hold I don't know, 20 or 30 microliters of, of your sample. And the bigger combs, so this, these wider combs can hold about 50 microliters of your sample, the way that I load gels, which is controversial. So stay tuned for the controversial gel loading. But the microwave just beeped, so we'll take a look. I like to swirl it around, it is hot, so be careful. Um, I don't know how to show you this, but there are 42 seconds should be perfect, you know, in this lab setting, but you just want to be able to hold this bottle up to the light and not see any bits floating around. I don't know if I can lean back far enough. Maybe you can see that. Maybe you can't, but this is thoroughly dissolved. If you're lazy like me, you can run it under water just so that it cools a little faster. I'm actually just gonna leave that under the water for a second while I grab a pipette. So for this 35 milliliter, 30 or 35 milliliter volume, we wanna add between two and two and a half microliters of ethidium bromide. There are no tips over there. Where are the tips? Here's some. All right. And this doesn't need to be sterile, right? This is, this is just for separating DNA or visualizing DNA. So nothing needs to be sterile here. 
Uh, this is our ethidium bromide, one percent solution. So I'm gonna go in, get a little bit with my pipette. There's two microliters of ethidium bromide. Just carefully cap that before you put it away so that you don't knock it over and spill it everywhere. And I'm gonna tilt the bottle, add the ethidium bromide, swirl it around, and the tip this is now contaminated waste. It needs to go in this ethidium bromide biohazard bucket and that gets disposed of properly maybe once every three years once it's full. So we'll take the gel. It's cooled down a bit. Um, no, it's like a hot cup of tea right now. I wouldn't want to hold my hand there for a long time. I think that's plenty good. We're just going to pour this in. Easy. Nothing hard. Just pour it in. Uh, and you know when you first pour it in you want to make sure there aren't any leaks around the edges But if you tighten the gel box in there nicely, then it should be fine Sometimes you can get bubbles if you do get bubbles you can take a tip and just move them around Or poke them, but it you know if they aren't right next to the well or they aren't in the middle of the gel It's it's not an issue So that's the gel set that's gonna take anywhere between 20 minutes and 45 minutes to set up properly. In the meantime, we can prepare our DNA samples. So we'll want to run something called a ladder with our samples. So we'll grab the ladder from the fridge. You don't have to store ladders in the fridge for whatever reason we do. Um, so we will use a 1KB, this is an BioRad, hopefully you can see that, BioRad 1KB molecular ruler. So you can look that up. If you use a different ladder, you just look up whatever ladder you have and it will tell you what the bands should look like. Maybe I'll throw it on the screen. But the bands, let me show you, let me show you in the gel. When you run a gel, it's gel electrophoresis, you're running a current through this jello. <laughs> it's just strawberry flavored jello, you're just running a current. So you want, uh, you set up the gel here with the DNA on this side, black is negative, red is positive. DNA is negatively charged because of the phosphate backbone. So when you turn on the electricity, the negatively charged phosphate backbones of the DNA wanna go to the positively charged electrode. So the DNA literally moves through the gel. The way that the DNA is separated is by size. So they're all gonna have, they're all gonna be pulled through the gel. You know, each um, piece of DNA is pulled through the gel with about the same force, but the size is what determines how far it moves through the gel. So if you have a really long piece of DNA, it won't move very far, but if you have a really short piece of DNA, it can zip through the matrix of the agarose and get through the gel faster. So short things don't travel as far, or short things travel very far, long things don't travel as far. So we need a ladder. So when we run the ladder, it has a 10 KB piece of DNA, a 9 KB, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one pieces of DNA. The one travels the furthest, the 10 travels the shortest. And that can give us, you know, when we look at our DNA that we're trying to determine the size of, that gives us a good idea of how big our DNA is. Now there are a lot of confounding variables when you're running gel. Nothing ever runs exactly how you want it unless you prototype it a couple of times or you have a lot of experience. So you know a lot of times close enough is good enough. <laughs> words, words to live by. Uh, so this is 60 nanograms per microliter DNA. Let's steal those tips. out of here 60 nanogram per microliter DNA this is a digested plasmid this should be about 7 KB so I'll just take some of this it, there's only a few microliters in here this is from an old experiment so I'm not upset if something happens to it so this is a this pipette is set to two microliters and I was only able to get about four microliters from that. That's fine. Um, this is probably even less DNA in here. No, it's about four microliters as well. 
maybe five. Yeah, about five. All right. And this is 12 nanograms per microliter. So we'll get four microliters of this as well. This may not show up on the gel, but we'll, we'll find out. So this first well is the digested backbone for a cloning reaction. This is the insert for that cloning reaction. I believe it's only like 200 or 300 base pairs. And then this is the Gibson assembly reaction where I mix these two, put them together, and they should have made a bigger plasmid. Let me show you that on a sticky note real quick. This one is the backbone. That's the piece of the plasmid. This is a circular piece of DNA. This is about seven KB, I believe. This is the insert. So that's going to be going in um, and I'll have another video on Gibson assemblies at some point but basically this lines up with that this lines up with that and they click together and you make a whole plasmid which should be in there at least in some quantities um, and this fragment I think is 200 base pairs uh, I'm not sure but we'll see on the gel the other thing you need to do to your DNA before you run it is add the loading die. There's some right here. This is the purple loading die. This is a 6x loading die. So if it's a 6x loading die, if we have five microliters of sample, we should add one microliter of the die. So we'll set the pipette to one. So we want the final concentration to be one. So we'll add one microliter there. there one in there all right so there is the dye it is indeed purple <laughs> so uh, once the gel is set we'll run we'll load the gel and then run it and see how it looks okay so here's our stuff that's gonna go in the gel there's our gel it's nice and set Got our tips. We can just take this comb out. That's what they're called, combs. That's satisfying. All right, so usually in the first lane, you'll put your ladder. I'm gonna mix it up a bit. The DNA settles sometimes. So usually I put the, this is a set to 10 microliters, but I'm just gonna estimate and say that's probably like five microliters, three or four or five microliters. And then we'll run down the row here and just load them. So I'll try to get in close. Uh, so most people will put the gel into the liquid. I like just pipetting it dry. Uh, you can fit more volume into the wells and it's just easier. You can see, you know, the hole in the wells easier. You know, this is like about five microliters that I'm putting in here, and you can see there's a lot more space. You can fit a lot of volume in these wells if you do a dry. So this is plugged in here, set to 130 volts. Put that in. Just like that. Really, we want the liquid to cover the gel. It's not really covering it. So we're going to top it up with a little bit of water not buffer because the buffer is gonna or the salts in the buffer are gonna stay behind and the water is the only thing that's evaporating right I've got a little floater in there that's okay I want to make sure the air is out of these wells I don't know if that's necessary but I'm doing it so, you know, normally when you're loading gels, you load it while it's in the liquid and you can't even see where the wells are. You just sort of have to be good. That's another reason I like doing it dry. Um, our electrophoresis boxes are kind of bad, so I wet the electrodes. That helps conduct some electricity. Put it on and run it. You can see the bubbles. 
that's electrolysis. So the water is splitting apart into oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen. Two hydrogen, one oxygen. Throw this away. We'll let that run for 10, 15 minutes. All right, I'm gonna be honest, I kind of forgot about this gel. <laughs> but I think it's fine. So I'm gonna stop it, take it off. It's been about 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Put the lid back on so that water doesn't evaporate and change the buffer concentration. And we'll throw it on. We have this pretty cheap UV light box. See if you can see that. Yeah. Okay, so there's the ladder. There's the um, digest. There's the Gibson assembly. And there's the insert. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm gonna take a better picture and put it on the screen. Um, but basically, yeah, so you can see the one KB band, the 10 KB band on the ladder, and then the steps in between. This gel actually ran really well. Um, and then to the right of the ladder, you see the digest. And I estimated that that was seven KB. It's like seven or eight KB, I think. Um, but you see it didn't run all the way to the seven KB band. It sort of looks like it might be 11 KB. And I think that's just because it's a lot of DNA there. So you can see it's a pretty bright band. Whereas this more faint band on the far right, I think that's about to, supposed to be two or 300 base pairs. Um, it ran a little bit more accurately because it was diluted properly. And then the one in the middle, we did actually get two bands. They're faint, but we did get two. So you can see the, the backbone is right next to the backbone on the left. And then further, the piece that didn't run as far is the assembled plasmid. So that's really, really cool to see. I think that's what that is. Very cool. All right, that's how you run a gel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you wanna fight me about how I load my gel, let me know in the comments below <laughs> or tell me the technique that you use. Uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.